Once upon a time, in a land not unlike your own, there lived a beautiful young woman named Belle. She was kind and thoughtful, selfless and hardworking. Above all, Belle loved God and her family. Belle spent her time pursuing her education and working to help her family. She brightened the day of all who met her with her cheerful outlook on life, a reflection of her faith. But in the same land lived someone concerned with no one but himself. He had great wealth and lived in the utmost luxury, yet no one envied him. He was a ruthless, cold-hearted man. His name was Eric Landry. But throughout the land, he was more commonly called the Beast. Mrs. Haygood? Yes, Eric. What is this? Breakfast. No, it's not. When you find anything for me to eat, I'll be in my office. I'll just toast a bagel then. I have a Snyder file done, and I got a call from Jensen Corporation. They want you to come out and consult for a week. Joy. Look, put this in my office, then I have some emails for you to follow up on. You're welcome. Oh, Eric, the repairman's coming by today to fix the fireplace. Do I care? Just a reminder. Mrs. Hagen, when have I ever cared about your mundane reminders? Just keeping you informed so you don't blame me later for not telling you. And when has that ever happened? Two weeks ago, when you screamed at the electrician for interrupting your need for solitude. You live alone, Eric. What do you need solitude for, anyway? Ready? Almost. I just have to pull these files. You go ahead. I'll lock up. Well, do you want me to do it for you? You know you have your homework. No, I'll be fine, and I totally heard your tone there. What? Don't knock the homework thing. I have complete respect for it. I've been there. You've been there, and for some reason you're still there. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do with an MBA anyway. Oh, I don't know. Probably buy this practice and fire you for mocking me. Oh, ha ha. So are we still on for tomorrow? Uh, with your cousin. Yeah. Do you like him? Greg? He seems nice. He's not bad looking. <laughs> it's not that. I just don't know him yet. Well, you can get to know him tomorrow at the art exhibit. Okay. See you later. Okay, bye. You were the most incompetent assistant ever. I told you not to call until I approved. But you did. No, I specifically said, do not make a move until we have them locked in. Okay, this is going to ruin my relationship with them. Like you have a relationship with anyone. <laughs> You're fired. You know what? Don't bother. I've had my resignation typed up for weeks. Well, they're judging by the date on this, then. I don't have to pay you for the last few weeks, now do I? You idiot! I, I am so sorry, sir. I didn't mean to. You didn't mean to? Okay, nobody tries to be an idiot. It always just happens. Do you have any idea how much this is worth? Okay, this is worth the lives of 10 people. Okay, 20 if they're you. I am terribly sorry, Mr. Landry. What can I do to make it up to you? You couldn't possibly do enough. I'm calling your boss first thing in the morning. Start looking for a new job. No, sir, please. I need this job. I don't care what you need. This is broken. My day is spoiled, and you're to blame for both. No, please, Mr. Landry. I can't lose this job. I can't be fired. My children depend on me. Get out! Now, before I call the police. I got a 79 on my math test, but Miss Parker says she's going to curve the test anyway. You're lucky she does that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Mike, stop acting like a seven-year-old. Mike, stop acting like a seven-year-old. You know, why not try harder so you don't have to rely on the curve? Dad, we're ready. Dad? What's wrong? You've been quiet all night. 
I need to start looking for a new job. Why? What happened? It was an accident. I broke something at, at Mr. Landry's, and he said he'll call my boss in the morning. I'll be fired. Dad, did you try and talk him out of it? Of course I did. But the man's a, a beast. He threatened to call the police on me. For what? It was an accident. That doesn't change anything. I've only had this job a few months. Mr. Landry is a powerful man and a spiteful one. Everyone knows it at church, in town, everyone. Let me see what I can do. No, Belle, this is my problem. Dad, we need you to keep this job. If there's something I can do, I'm doing it. Uh, is Eric Landry available? Your name? He doesn't know me. It's Belle Watson. What is this regarding? My father from the repair company today. Drive on in. Just walk around the back of the estate and you'll find Mr. Landry. Thank you. What are you doing on my property? Are you Mr. Landry? I came to ask you not to call my dad's boss. You're the repairman's daughter. Well, you must be an idiot, too. Excuse me, but that's uncalled for, as is the way you treated my father. Treated him? You want me to reward him for breaking priceless art? No, of course not, but... Don't call his boss. My family relies on him. We need him to keep that job. Do you know what fine art costs? Please, I have a sister and two brothers, one who's away at college, and they need our support. Have your mother start working, then. My mother died years ago. I do what I can to help, but it's my father's job we rely on. Lovely sob story. It doesn't change anything. I was wrong. It was an accident, and if you want it made up to you, we'll... I'm sorry. We can't pay anything close to what the art was probably worth. But firing my father won't help. It'll make me feel better. Will it? Please, there's got to be something I can do, some way we can make this right. All right. I just fired my assistant today. You'll replace her. You'll work for me until I feel the debt is paid off. But I have a job. You want me to call your dad's boss? Where do you work? I'm a part-time assistant at an orthodontic office. You work part-time, but you claim your family's desperate? I work and I go to school part-time. Well, I guess you have your work cut out for you then, don't you? When you're not working, you'll come here. You can go out the way you came in. Thank you. Craig should be here soon. What? You remember? The exhibit, today. Oh, I can't go, I'm sorry. Why not? It's a long story. But Craig's been asking about you ever since you guys met. He had me set this up just so you would come. I know, I'm sorry. Is there something about him you don't like? No, it's, it's not that, it's just I have another commitment. <laughs> really? Anna, I promise I'm not trying to blow this off. Really. Hey! Hey! I gotta go. I'm sorry. Uh, she's gonna have to come with us another day. Why? Is this something I said? You must be the new assistant. I'm Mrs. Haygood. Come on in. Now, don't let him frighten you. He's right in there. Thank you.
Oh, you're here. Do you have a name? Bell. Good. When I ring, you come. No, it means beauty. If you say so. Follow me. You'll work here when you're not running errands. Errands? I understand that, but your mid-level managers are abysmal. Do you mind? Put the documents right there. Okay, the suits go in my closet. Okay, Don, look, I'll be honest with you. You either need to retrain them or rethink your quarterly projections, one or the other. What are you doing? Sorry, I was looking for the right room. Does this look like a bedroom? I have no problem going back in our deal. I've got the number for your father's work right on my desk. I'm sorry. Could you maybe show me which room's the right one? some fresh pie ready, Eric. Would you like some? Sure. I'll be right in. You come too, Belle. Thank you, Mrs. Haygood. Go ahead. When you're finished, I want you to alphabetize the books. Are you sure? I can do... I want you to alphabetize the books. You know, I can do more than filing and alphabetizing if you want. I'm pretty organized. Well, then this shouldn't be a problem. Where do you live, Bill? Uh, just a few blocks from here, actually, down on... Um... I'm reading. Can we eat now? Hey guys. So how was your day? Yeah, was the beast as bad as everyone says? Kelly, that's what everyone calls him. Last week in Sunday school, Mrs. Robertson used him as an example of pride and anger. <laughs> I'm thrilled to hear that, but it's still not nice. She says that's what keeps him from coming to church. That and the alcohol. That's enough, Kelly. Is he mean? John McCoy sent Landry chasing down the street. Mr. Landry, Mike. Mr. Landry chasing down the street one day. What did John do? Keep it in the mailbox. <laughs> That's lame. That's lame. Stop it, Mike. So how was it? Bearable. There's a phone number on my desk. I need it right away. No, not this one. Maybe it's on my credenza.
It's a guy. Who? Craig. Who's he? Hey, Belle. Hey, Craig. I thought we could go get some ice cream. Um... Okay. I saved us a trip. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. I was really looking forward to spending time with you the other day. Why didn't you come with us? I had to work. Really? Yeah. So you were leaving work? I'll, I have a second job. Second job? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a bit much. Yeah, we can handle it. Anna said you're in school, too. So... So isn't school already like a second job? So that's two or three? <laughs> Come on, Belle. Maybe it's time you settle down. Let somebody take care of you. I can take care of myself pretty well. You know what I mean. Like a boyfriend. Or a husband. <coughs> it's time to found the right guy. Maybe he's sitting right next to you. <laughs> we haven't even been on a date yet. I can fix that. What I mean is we don't even know each other. Sometimes you just have to trust your feelings. And if you're not sure, you can trust mine. I have to go. Um, I have an exam coming up. Thanks for the ice cream. Belle, where's your second job? The Landry Mansion. Good morning. Belle, want some breakfast? No, no, thank you. Is Mr. Landry here? He's in the spa room. He just asked for you. The spa room? Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Landry? Ah, Belle. There's a book on my knife stand in my bedroom. Bring it. You can wait in the next room. Read a book if you'd like. Well, at least I'll be able to find one easily. Bill! Yes? Get me my towel. What are you doing with that? Reading. It was on your shelf. I hope you don't mind. Get rid of it. What? Why? I said get rid of it. But it's a nice copy. It's just a book. No, it's God's word. Isn't that sacrilegious? Do you think I care? I haven't cared what God thinks for years. Well, maybe that should change. Look, I don't know you or your reasons, but you don't know me or mine. Please don't be so disrespectful. It's my house. If you don't like it, you're welcome to leave. Then deal with it. I'm going out of town tomorrow, and my office is a list of things for you to do while I'm gone. For now, go pack my bag. Mrs. Haygood, what's for breakfast? Hello? I can't stand him. Wait, what are you talking about? 
Eric Landry. Landry, as in Scary Landry, Landry Mansion, Scary Rich Landry? Yes to all. What are you doing hanging around? Him. <sighs> okay. So Dad broke something at Landry's house when he was repairing a fireplace, and so Landry threatened to call Dad's boss and have him fired, so I'm working for Landry until he thinks the debt's been paid off. Oh. Is that where you've been lately? Because Craig thinks you're avoiding him. No, that'd be mean. So is his house, like, amazing? Anna. What? Would your dad's boss even fire him? Well, it's hard to say, with him being so new to the job. Plus, with Landry calling. Got it. So what's bugging you now? Oh, he's such a jerk. He's purposely making this harder than it has to be. He has me doing the stupidest little jobs. He insults me constantly, and he has absolutely no respect for anything. Nothing. So it sounds like all the rumors are true. You know he's a drunk, right? Yeah, I've heard that, but I haven't seen him drink anything. Well, it sounds like he acts like a drunk. This is so helpful. Fine. Dish it back, then. He's gonna be a jerk. Show him up. I gotta get through this. I can't take him off and have him fire me and call my dad's boss. Well, I'm proud that you can do something more important. <laughs> What's he do, anyways? I heard he got drunk at work and started a fire. He's a consultant or something. I don't know. Well, want to blow this off? Catch a movie? Yes. No. He's going out of town, but I still got tons to do. Plus, schoolwork. Ew. Lucky you. Hang in there. <sighs> Thanks. Talk to you later. Later. You're home? Yep. I thought you'd be at the mansion. <laughs> you say it like it's glamorous or something. Landry's out of town. So what are you doing? Looking up stuff about his business. Do you think he's really out of town? I mean, what if he has a double life? <laughs> like Batman. Not likely. Well, how do you know? Have you ever followed him? No, and I never will. But you could be a sidekick. Batgirl. <sighs> Kelly, I'm trying to work. Fine. But if he does end up having a secret identity, you have to show me the Batcave. Is he? Welcome back. What are you doing with that? Reading. You have a typo on page four. What gives you the right to- Mr. Landry! Call him Eric, dear. Eric, it's my job. Your job is to do what I tell you. You know, despite what you may believe, I can think for myself. And if you really want a decent assistant, let me do something besides running errands for you. Do you think you know anything about what I do? I'm beginning to. You help companies identify problems so they're more profitable. For example, you think this company is far understaffed. I don't have time for this. Look, you might as well let me do something more useful. You only have so many shirts I can take to the cleaners. I can buy more. What do you have to lose? I'll still do all the menial stuff. Just give me a chance to show you what I can do. You've been here a couple of weeks. Do you think I'd trust you with anything If you want a real assistant, then yes! Fine. Read all these. When you start to understand what you're really dealing with, then we'll talk. Mrs. Haygood? I didn't know this was back here. Yep, this is the staff kitchen. But aren't you the only staff? <laughs> I didn't build the place. Sounds like you've been keeping busy. Yeah. Lots of shouting since you've come. I imagine you'd hear that even if I weren't here. Yeah, but 
Oh, that's just how he is. If it's not wrong of me, Mrs. Haggard, why is Eric the way he is? I'm sure you've heard the rumors. There are plenty. But I can't believe that more than half of them are true. <laughs> <laughs> About 10 years ago, Eric was married. He'd started a business with a couple of his friends. It was a big success. He went to church, as strong as everyone else. Then his wife died. Sarah was her name. It was an accident, but Eric took it very hard. He blamed God for it. Stopped going to church. Then he started drinking. So that is true. Alcohol affected Eric so much his business partners, so-called friends, ousted him from his own company. He was all right financially, as you can see. That just made matters worse. He was drinking so much, his whole life was out of control. But I haven't seen him drink once since I got here. Well, got so bad, he finally checked himself into one of those rehab clinics. He hasn't had a drink in five years. Hard times. But he pulled through okay, all things considered. Built himself a good consulting firm and all. Keeps him busy. Then why is he so... Mean? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody takes hard times differently. For Eric, he still blames God. And all those rumors don't help either. I should go. Thanks for talking with me. I should have time then. Just a couple of days to start. If we need more, we'll talk. Okay, bye Mark. Eric, I have to go to my other job now. It's 2.15. Yeah, I have the ending shift and then I have class after that. Fine. I'd like to take these home to read tonight if that's all right. Well, I'm a little busy here. Do you think I care? Hello? Hey! Hi, Craig. What's up? You wanna go out to dinner? I already ate, but thanks. What about a movie? Anna's been really wanting to see... <laughs> ...in the middle of something, but maybe this weekend? Oh. Okay. What are you doing? Reading. You're gonna blow us off for a book. Work, actually. If you're sure. Yeah. I appreciate the invite, though. I really do. Okay. Okay. Bye. Was that Craig? Yes, Kelly. Is he a good kisser? Kelly, we're not even dating. Well, he is a boy. When you kiss a guy, how do you coordinate everything. I mean, does the girl tilt her head to the right and the guy to the left? Or the guy to the right and the girl to the left? Wait, who's left? <laughs> Are you really asking me this? It's a good question. How do you know not to hit heads? And what about noses? You're not gonna show me, are no, you? No, I'm kicking you out of my room. So you haven't kissed Craig? Did you finish reading the reports? Yes. Okay, tell me what you learned. Thought your analysis was pretty good. That means so much to me. You're really smart. I mean, I figured you'd have to be intelligent with what you do, but what you've written down and figured out, you're really smart. Okay, now that we've established I'm smart, did you learn anything? Okay. Companies obviously come to you for recommendations on how to be more efficient and profitable. And from what you wrote, they all can improve. They'll be thrilled to hear that. <laughs> you find faults I've never even thought about, and your analysis makes my head spin with revenues and cutting back debts. I'm just 
a little bit confused on your recommendations, though. Oh, really? Just seems like you're a little harsh on them. I'm wondering why. I mean, you're supposed to be helping them. I am helping them. I tell them what they're doing wrong. Yeah, but shouldn't she be a little nicer about Look, it? Look, my clients don't pay me for fluffy compliments. Look, you view the company as an entity, right? Right. But it's run by people. People are influenced by emotions. Wouldn't it help to be a little more diplomatic? Okay, look, you read a few reports and you think you know it all. Okay, that's enough. Shut the door behind you. Eric, I'm just... I don't care. Okay, you don't know what you're talking about. You're done for the day. Pick up my shirt from the dry cleaner on your way in tomorrow. Okay, Jessica. We'll see you later. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're quiet today. I'm working. Ah, speaking of, how's your other boss? Mm. Is it really worth it? I mean, your dad could find another job eventually. Uh, it took him months to find this one. Plus, with James away at school and Kelly and Mike. We need the stability. What about you? I mean, you're the one who's working with the beast. <laughs> I wouldn't call him that. He does deserve some respect, even if... You know. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, Eric. Mrs. Haygood. I found these in the theater room. Do you want them in here? Yes. Dinner's nearly ready. Will Belle be around to join us? Do you see her here? Just wondering. Don't be too long or the food will get cold. I'll be in in a few minutes. Sorry, I thought you were already in the office. I, I should have checked. Sorry. It's a good thing I wasn't in the shower. Yeah. I'm just gonna wait in the office. I'm taking the day off. I'm not feeling very well. Did you want me to get you something? Or Mrs. Haygood, or your doctor? My doctor? What do you think's wrong with me? Nothing. I just... <laughs> Never mind. What? I just figured you'd have one on hand or something. Why is that? It fit. Big house, well-off guy, the on-call doctor. Maybe that's just a movie thing. Maybe. Yeah. Belle? I'm sorry about my behavior yesterday. You... You read everything and I... <clears throat> anyway, my apologies. Feel free to take the day off. Okay. Thanks. See you tomorrow. Can I ask why you keep it? Excuse me? Isn't it kind of a temptation? Oh, this coming from someone who would never understand. Have you ever had a drop of alcohol in your life? <sighs> it's a reminder. For what? To never go there again. 
This is Eric. Kyle, yes. The 21st would work just fine. Hello, Mr. Landry's okay. office. I got the profile, but... Uh, he's on another call right now. No, can I... I You're those. supposed to send me a packet yesterday, me and it's not here. How quickly do you want Where my is proposal? it? Give me till my okay, what's your name? I'm Brett Yielding, of Yielding Dynamics. Okay. We need that right away. I told Eric this three days ago, and he still hasn't come through, which isn't like him. I can't stress the urgency enough. We're preparing a presentation for the board, just waiting for Eric's report to finalize the number. Actually, Mr. Yielding, it's my fault. I failed to get it out in time yesterday. You? Your boss will hear about this. I'm very sorry. Uh, you should have it first thing in the morning. I better. Who's that? Mr. Yielding? Uh, the packet. Is it? It's no problem. I'll just take it out right now if you want. Mr. Yielding, please. Is Eric here? He's walking outside. He asked that you wait in the great room. I'll go fetch him. Um... Yes, dear. Which one's the great room? The one right off the entry. Eric's bedroom? No. That's a nice room. No need to give it an ego. I'll show you. So why is it called the great room? Because it's big. Everything here is big. <laughs> you covered for me on the yielding thing. I didn't even think about it yesterday. I just, that's what I get for taking the day off. You were sick. Yeah, but it's not an excuse. But thank you for what you did. I'd like for you to read this analysis, make it more diplomatic. We'll go over it tomorrow. Oh, there you are. Hey, just finishing up on the diplomacy revision. You still working on that? Yeah. It's not the State of the Union. Come on. No, it's, it's not done. Well, let me see what you have. I'd really rather explain my notes. I just wrote whatever I was thinking. See the good in the manager. Respect the CEO. He brought you in. Too harsh, too critical, too mean? Eric. <laughs> Why would they listen to criticism with no hope? I was going to type those up and explain what they meant. Okay, there's no need. They're quite clear. Okay, just let me finish it. Okay, finish? There's more? Well, great. I can't wait to hear how else you think I failed at what I do. Eric, you asked me to help you with this. I know what I asked you to do. Now I'm telling you to stop. Okay, you think you understand this business simply because you can read. I know my clients and what they need to hear. Sorry. Do you have something you wanted me to do? Yes, actually, I did have a list of things I thought you could help me with. But don't don't worry about it right now. You know, I'd rather pick up your dry cleaning than have you yell at my work. Okay, look, I'm trying to be nice. <sighs> okay, your notes were correct. I'm just I'm not used to criticism. That's ironic how someone so critical can't take criticism. Come on. Come on. I find this clears my head. 
thought you might enjoy it too. You've been working pretty hard up there. Nah, it's just some writing and revising. Look, I didn't mean to disregard your work. Neither should you. These grounds are beautiful. <laughs> My wife, she she loves flowers and plants and anything she could grow. She planted most of this. How long ago did she pass away? Ten years ago. But you knew that, didn't you? <laughs> Mrs. Hagen has a tendency to talk about my history. I'm sure she's already told you plenty I'd rather you didn't know. It must be hard for you. Listen, I have some phone calls I need to make. But I'm sorry about before. I do appreciate your work. What's this? I'm sorry, it's just a little homework. I already finished. It's all right. Auditing. It's a little advanced. Well, it is grad school. MBA? Mm-hmm. What did you get for your undergrad? English. Oh, and that didn't take you where you wanted to go? <laughs> you have an air there. I know. I've been trying to figure out why. Look, your formula's wrong. Let me show you. What's wrong with that? Like a Condescending. No, it's honest. So <laughs> there's being honest, and then there's being excessively blunt. I was lost in the dark. You kept your faith and showed me a new way. And I've learned to see the beauty of my heart. Now that I can fly. smile like the sun came around you took a chance and now I understand and I feel like I've been given a new start Well, somebody's here to see you. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Who's winning? She is. You seem happier, Eric. That's not a bad thing. You can't be a grouch forever. It's just nice to see you smiling again. What are you doing here? It's been a while since we've been able to get together. I wanted to see you. Well, that's sweet, but you should see me at my home, not here. You're never there. I try to catch you at home all week, but you're always here or studying. Or... Oh, the man himself. Look, I'm sorry I haven't been around. It's just I've been really busy lately. Oh, I understand. I just hate to see Anna disappointed when we make plans and you have to bail. I see Anna at work all the time, and she's fine with it. All right, I hate to be disappointed. I just want to see you more, get to know you, go out to dinner. Craig, you're a nice guy. Anna's your cousin, and I know she's just trying to do us both a favor, but I can't just drop everything and go to a movie with you. I can't ditch my family to go to a restaurant. You ditch them for here? What? When I stopped by the other day, your dad said he hardly sees you anymore. 
Why are you getting into my life? I barely know you and you're visiting my family. I'm not, I'm just... Are you dating this guy? Because if you are, there's no way that any of us can compete with Mr. Riches. Now you're being mean. No, I'm not. I just don't want to see you get dragged down to his level because you're spending all this time with his him. His level? You know, despite what you or others may think, Eric's actually a nice guy. <laughs> Eric? <laughs> That's informal. What, do you expect me to call him Mr. Landry all the time? It'd make me feel better. Anna and I call our boss at the orthodontist office by his first name. What's the difference? The difference here is that your boss is rich and questionable. Questionable? <laughs> I have to get back to work. Fine. Just be careful. I don't like the idea of you working for this beast. Don't call him that. Look, I appreciate your concern, Craig, but I won't let you disrespect him, especially not when you're standing on his property. Eric? Yeah. You going somewhere? I thought I lost this. Oh, um, you got a message from Kyle Kincaid. He wants to know if Thursday still works for you. Oh, it's a dinner meeting with him and the CEO. Are you free that night? Me? Yeah, it's a business dinner. I'd like my assistant with me. Uh, yeah, I have a class, but I should be done by six. Then I'll pick you up at seven. Okay. So, tonight's the big date. It's a business meeting, that's all. Mm -hmm. Business meeting that you're gonna get all dolled up for. Do you even have a dress? Of course. But it's no big deal. Please don't tell Craig because- Because Craig will get all jealous. It's okay. He's my cousin, but you're my friend. And I'm not gonna force you to date him if you prefer somebody else. Thank you. But it's still not a date, by the way. I don't think of Eric as anything other than my boss. Is he picking you up at your house? Yeah. Well, then he thinks it's a date. No, it's logistics. I have a class until six, and then I have to hurry to get ready, so he's picking me up on the way. Uh-huh. Okay. Sure. Very nice. Thank you. It's nice to see that sit somewhere other than the dry cleaners. Kyle, David, this is Bill. It's nice to meet you. My date, Julie. Hi. This is my wife, Diane. Hello. Hi. So Eric, let me tell you what we're thinking. We've got a new it's idea. Good to have you here. Want to shift it from a national to it's nice that Eric brought somebody by. What do you mean? Well, he usually comes to these things alone. Really? You're on board with that? Mm-hmm. We'll have to shut down that division and let people go, but we think the new model will be worth it. And you factored in the cost of pensions and severance and so forth? Of course. All right. What? Sorry? Did you want to add something? Well, are you sure you want to let go of the people you already have? Well, layoffs are a part of business. Yes, but a new model is going to take a lot of manpower. With a little training, couldn't they easily take over the new production? Or we can find new people who already know how to do the job. Your current people could be trained. I mean, it'll take time and money, but I think in the long run, you'd be better off. You don't know some of our people, though. I mean, change just doesn't come easy. Well, it never does. But when faced with the alternative, you'd be surprised how many employees are willing to go through new training. You wouldn't have to worry about new hires or quick turnovers, overloading your HR department. I mean, think of all the time and money that's wasted on employees that bail after the initial bonus kicks in. And they won't all be ready to work. I mean, you're going to need to train them, at least on your company policies and procedures, okay, if not further. Well, maybe that's something you can look into, Eric, when you come up to our New York facility. 
Sure. It was so nice to meet you both. It was very nice to meet you too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so good night. You did well tonight. <laughs> I don't think Kyle appreciated what I had to say. Well, he doesn't have your compassion. You know, compassion's not a bad thing in business. I didn't say it was. Do you have some time right now? This is beautiful. So peaceful. I didn't even know this place was up here. It's hidden away well enough. Oh, thank you. So how'd you know it was here? My wife used to come up here, take pictures. Photography was her hobby. She loved it up here. So, what got you into consulting? I liked it better than dealing with the whole company. Because of what happened with your old company? I get to go in and fix things. <laughs> and I don't have to deal with the day-to-day -day hassles and politics and people I don't like and... That's understandable. Plus, you're better off where you are now than if you'd stayed, don't you think? No, I'd have a bigger house if I were still there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean it. I think things happen for a reason. It's not always easy, but there's someone looking out for us. Someone's looking out for us. Yeah. I guess that implies that God wants us to be happy. You don't think he does? My wife and I were out one night driving. We weren't speeding or doing anything dangerous. The left front tire hit the road wrong and blew out. After that, we went off the road. There wasn't a single other person on that road, no one to help. For, for a highway like that, that's pretty unusual. It, it was as if... God knew exactly what he was doing, and I couldn't do a thing to stop him. By the time we woke up, she was already gone. I prayed, and I prayed. It didn't make a difference. So I sat in that car, trapped, unable to move for three hours until someone even noticed. But I didn't stop praying. I figured it was the only thing that I could do. I was still stupid enough to believe that she might actually be okay. She might even live. So no, I don't really think God cares for me. And I don't believe he wants me to be happy. This happened such a long time ago. And you still feel this way? What about what's changed? What about getting stronger and growing from your experiences? Growing? I lost everything. I became a drunk. I had to put my life on hold. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. I should get you home. Why did you do it alone? I mean, there had to be somebody you could have gone to for help, or for comfort. There was. A bottle. Not the strongest solution. What did it matter? I mean, no one saw me as the same. All the rumors started, I lost my business. What else did I have? 
Maybe more than you realized. Something on the wind chills me to my toes as it kicks up life's shifting sands. Whispered restless thoughts stir my timid soul to close my eyes and think of where I am. The swirling dust I find alters my. Hi. Hi. Do you mind if I study some? I have a test today. No, go ahead. Thanks. How's it coming? Good. Are you cold? No, I'm okay. Here. Thank you. Is that really the time? Oh, shoot, I'm gonna be late. What? An exam starts in 10 minutes. Hello? Kelly, what'd you do? No, I can't. I have an exam that starts in 10 minutes. If I don't leave right now, I'm gonna be late. Well, you're just gonna have to fess up to Dad then. I'll call him. Kelly, no, no, I, I can't talk right now. Okay, I'll figure something out. Okay. What's wrong? My little sister. She got in trouble at school, and the principal wants someone to pick her up. I'm gonna have to miss my exam. What? Why? What about your dad? No, she doesn't want me to call him. Plus, it's really hard for him to just pick up and leave work like that. Well, I can pick her up. Really? Well, yeah, you've got your exam. Plus, it's slow here today anyway. I'll just pick her up and drop her by your house. Are you sure? Yeah, you're gonna be late. Kelly? You're here to take her home? Uh, yes. Do I need to sign for her or something? Wait here. Our principal, Mr. Daniels, would like to speak with you. With me? I guess my sister sent you. What are you in for? Mm. What? Cheating. Let's talk in my office. No, no, Kelly. You stay here. So is there a, a, a reason you wanted to speak with me? Mr. Watson. No, no, hear me out. I know you may want to defend your daughter. It's only natural. But I'm not Mr. Please don't interrupt. We're concerned that Kelly would cheat. She's normally such a sweet girl, a little rambunctious, but intelligent and able. Yeah. Why would she cheat now? I've seen her scores and she's always excelled. Perhaps there's something going on at home. Not that I'm aware of. Look, Mr. Daniels, I, I don't have a lot of time. I was afraid of that. Perhaps you should make time. She is your daughter. Clearly. I see a lot of this. In fact, it's one of the biggest problems we see in our schools today. Parents just aren't making time for their children. And sometimes the children act out like this, cheating to get attention. Well, we'll work on that. Good, good. Listen to your daughter. You'd be amazed how many problems can be solved just by doing that. Here at our school, we listen to our students. And I'm very proud of that. Well, you should be. So did you do it? 
your mansion really have secret passageways? No, it doesn't. It wasn't really cheating. I couldn't remember this one equation on this one problem, so I asked Dylan. But then Miss Parker saw me and she hauled me down to the principal's office. Dylan didn't even say anything. But it doesn't matter because I remembered the equation. I just couldn't then, you know? So it's not really cheating. You may want to rethink your definition of cheating. I am so dead. Dad will ground me for sure. Do you ever feel like your life is over? I do, and it's not even fair because I didn't mean for it to happen. It just looked wrong, you know? Wrong time, wrong place? Yeah. Dad is going to be so mad. And Belle will lecture me, I'm sure. Which means I'll hear it twice because Mike will mimic her. Something about being more responsible and not procrastinating, which I wasn't. Come on. She'll probably tell me some other deep thing like... Grow from it? <laughs> yeah. Mom wouldn't have lectured me. Do you think about your mom a lot? I guess. She would be more understanding about this. Well, I imagine Belle will be understanding too. Maybe. I think she overdoes it, you know, trying to make up for Mom. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad Belle's around. Things would have been way bad if she hadn't come back. Come back? She was in California at school. When Mom died, she came back here. It's okay. Uh, I can tell you later. No, it's all right. What, what is it? Thank you for taking care of Kelly. That was really sweet of you. There's no trouble. Well, thank you anyway. <laughs> um, I'm going to go get your email up. Uh, Kyle Kincaid should have sent your itinerary by now. I didn't think you liked fast food. Why wouldn't I? Because I never see you eat it. You don't know everything about me. May I ask you something? Sure. When your mother died, how did you react? Same as anybody else, I guess. We were devastated. I missed her so much. I still do, but I knew everything would be all right. How? What do you mean? How did you know God wasn't just putting you through some trial, testing you? <laughs> Maybe he was, but I won't fault him for it. He knows what I can handle better than I do, and besides, it's not like I went through it alone. It happened. I trusted God, and he helped me through it. It wasn't easy. It took time to heal, but he was there for me every step of the way. You're stronger than I am. I don't know. You stopped drinking. I started drinking. Yeah, but not everyone can get over it. You did. It's amazing what you can get through with the right help. Hello? Hi. Eric? Yeah, I just landed and heading to my hotel. Thought I'd check in and see how things are going. Everything's fine. It's quiet, but... Yeah? Well... How, how are your classes going? Good. I was just finishing up an assignment. Oh, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. Okay, well... Um, call me if you need anything, okay? I will. Thanks. All right, see you when I get back. Okay. Good night. Bye. It's 
So, he's been gone? Yep, he gets back in two days. So, do you miss him? Well, let's make the most of it and do something fun. Yeah, okay. You know, Craig's been asking about you if you're still open to that. Craig. What? I was kind of rude to him last time I saw him. I mean, not really, but still, I should have been. Yeah, he told me about that. Really? What did he say? Oh, I wouldn't worry about it. He just wants to see you. Thanks for lunch. I rented some movies if you want to come over and watch them tonight. Oh, thanks, but I actually have some studying I need to get to. Free tomorrow night? <laughs> I just want to maximize my time with you before Mr. Riches gets back. Why do you always make fun of him like that? Everybody knows he's a difficult guy. That's why they call him the beast. Thanks for lunch. I gotta go. Look, if I seem out of line, it's just because I know how great you are. Craig. I just want you to get everything you deserve and more. You're special like that. <sighs> Okay, great. Thanks. Bye. Greg, how's your date? It's all right. Just all right? And I thought you would have so much fun. I did. I know she's amazing. I know she's the one, you know? Who can stand by me and everything I'm supposed to do in life. What? But why is she working for this Landry guy? I can never spend any time with her because she's always at his beck and call. Well, she kind of has to be. What do you mean? Well, Belle's dad is working at Landry's mansion, and he broke something, and so he said he would have him fired if he didn't pay for it. So now Belle's working for Landry until it's all good. <laughs> Sounds like extortion. Yeah, it's messed up. But Belle's dad has his job, and that's all that matters, right? Hello, Eric. Hello, Mrs. Hagen. How was your trip? Good. I'm glad to be back, though. I'll be right in to unpack those. Thank you. Have you seen Belle lately? Yes, she's checked in every day. Really? Mm-hmm. She's a good one. Yes, she is. When are you gonna let her off the hook? I'd say she's done more than enough time. I know. You could give her the choice to stay, if you want her to. Yeah, but I'm not sure she'd take it. Might be surprised, Eric. I know you might be busy, but I was wondering if you wanted to go out tonight, or tomorrow, or whenever. I, um... Craig, I'd, I'd rather not. I'm just not interested in you like that. I mean, I'd like to keep our friendship, but that's it. Belle, come on. I know you've got a lot going on, but I'm willing to wait. I know this is right. It's not about my schedule. Well, I'll... When you change your mind, I'll be here. No, Craig, I'm not gonna...
Hi, this is Eric Landry. Hello? Hello? Hey, how was your trip? Good. Uh, listen, I'll tell you all about it. I was just wondering if you could come over. Sure, there's probably lots to do. No, it's, it's not that. I just wanted to talk to you about something. Okay. Give me a half hour, I'll be right over. Okay. Bye. Dad? Oh, that, that horrible, horrible man. What happened? They fired me. What? Why? They got a call from Eric Landry. Bell? <laughs> I'll get you. After all this time, I thought you were different. That what everybody said about you wasn't true. I even defended you. Belle! Don't! I fell for it once. This act. But I won't anymore. You really are a beast. Bell, wait! Bell here? No. Wait, wait. I, I just want to talk to her. Could you have her call me? <laughs> you have a lot of nerve, Mr. Landry. Maybe you think you can get away with anything, but you won't hurt my family anymore. Now go away. I'm busy looking for a job. Yes, this is Eric Landry. No, everything's fine here. I, I was wondering, is there a Mr. Watson still working for you? Fired? No, that wasn't me that called. Look, there must be some misunderstanding.
Hey, guys. Guess what? Dad got his job back. Really? Yeah, guess the guilt got to him. He called again. So did you guys save me any dinner? Taking a break? Yeah, I got tired of trying to catch up on everything. School and laundry and sleep. <laughs> yeah. Do you want some dessert? Kelly tried her hand at instant pudding. No, I'm okay. Yeah, I can't be too bad. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I am almost glad that I was fired for a while. Really? Well, you didn't have to put up with all the Landry hassle anymore. Oh, that was more his doing than mine, but I was happy to do it. You gave up a lot, just, just like when your mother died. Dad, it really wasn't a big deal. I have always been proud of you, but I want you to start looking out for yourself now. Dad, I was happy to come back. No, I know, but you've more than earned the right to a little happiness. You find it. Whatever makes you happy, for you. Please stop calling. Bill, wait. Get, let me explain. Thank you for getting my dad's job back, but I've had enough. Bill, it was a mistake. Yes. It was. You never should have held my dad's job over his head in the first place. So, are you working later? What do you mean? At Landry's. No. Well, have you talked to him since? Yeah. So, you're still ticked at him? Wouldn't you be? Well, yeah, but he tried to make it up to you, didn't he? He went back on our deal. Just because his sliver of a conscience got to him doesn't mean I have to do anything for him. Well, at least I'll have more time for Craig now. I'm kidding. He told me about the other day. <laughs> You're cruel. You okay with it? Sure. I mean, Craig's my cousin, but I know how he can be. <laughs> this is Eric. Uh, yeah. Bell isn't with me anymore. That's too bad. I actually like that one. Me too. Hi. Hi. How have you been? Fine, thanks. Hey, I heard about what happened. Sorry about your dad and his job. Yeah, I'm just sorry it came to this. Listen, uh, if you ever want to go out and get your mind off things, I'm here. Thanks, but I'll manage.
I am starving, and I heard their muffins are great. Yeah, that might be good. Why am I here again? To eat. Look, Greg begged me. He just wanted to see you one more time, and he swore that if you still felt whatever, then he'd back off. Well, at least it's breakfast. I usually skip it, and then I'm starving by 10. Well, at least it'll be worth it for your stomach, then. <laughs> Where is he, anyway? He called in a panic, turned his alarm off early. Hey, why did you tell him about my dad? I kind of wished you didn't know about him getting fired and stuff. Well, I didn't tell him. You didn't? No. I told him about the whole you working for Eric deal, but not about your dad getting fired. I figured he'd rub it in, and that's the last thing you need. Hey, girls. Hi, Craig. Craig, how did you know my dad got fired? Anna told me. No, I didn't. Oh. Must have heard it somewhere. Craig? Really? Did you call my dad's work? No. Why would I do that? Craig? I'm oh, such an idiot. I can't believe this. How could you do something like oh, that? But the guy's awful. You should even... leave. Bell! <laughs> what? You are such a loser. Eric? Bell? Where's Eric? I haven't seen him yet this morning. He didn't. I'll call his cell phone. Where would he go? I'll check the grounds. Eric? Bell. What are you doing here? Thinking. Just thinking? Yeah. <sighs> what happened to the reminder? I get tired of it hanging over my head. Plus, it was way overdue. Belle, I'm sorry about your dad. I should never have threatened him or put you through any of this. You're right. But it wasn't all bad. Really? Yeah. I got to know you. Instead of all the rumors. I should have known you'd never go back on your deal. It's not you. Well, it sounds like me. <laughs> but I don't want to be like that anymore. I mean, I've seen how you treat others and how you've treated me. Even after all the terrible things I did to you. You make me want to be a better person. You sure it's me? You played a big part. You helped me see what I've tried to ignore. I realize now I was never alone. I just wasn't listening. And you were right. God wants me to be happy. So, are you? <laughs> I'm getting there. I mean, it's not perfect yet. For example, I don't have an assistant anymore. And I was going to ask you to stay on. Uh... Yeah, I, I have to check. I still have school and my other job, but... Oh. Well, it's just an excuse anyway. 
an excuse? Pal, I've only cared about myself for a very long time. And it's awkward. Now that I care about you. What do you say? I'm saying that I want to be with you. I know I probably don't deserve it, but I'll do whatever I can to try. Well, you don't have to try too hard. You make me happy. With Eric's transformation and his renewed faith, the people in the land discovered that the beast was gone. In his stead was a kind gentleman whose heart had been changed by the power of God and the love of a woman named Belle. And while their world wasn't perfect, they still lived happily ever after.